further medications that evacuate the bowel may be necessary, and that's what we're talking about the cathartics here. So cathartic is a substance that produces a frequent, uh, frequent soft or liquid bowel movement. There are two types. You have an irritant type, and then you have the saline type. And then I have a list here of different types of uh, laxatives that may be used prior to having the procedure done. Contraindications for cathartics, gross bleeding, okay? Because again, what that does is it causes the bowels to con contract. And if you have gross bleeding, you may cause uh, more internal damage with that additional uh, peristaltic activity going on in the, the colon. If you have severe di diarrhea, <clears throat> okay? Um, if you have <clears throat> severe diarrhea, it's not that it's the, uh, the poop that's the issue. It's this can cause, if you have diarrhea, what's going on to your, it can cause dehydration. So it can cause further dehydration with the cathartics. Obstruction, you especially don't want to do that, and also inflammatory lesions. Okay? Um, I, this is new. So when you're doing a barium minima, just like any of the other fluoroscopic procedures, it's important that you do have to do a scalp first. So the whole purpose of the scout is to make sure that the patient has been, uh, that they properly followed the guidelines for preparation. So any retained fecal matter may obscure the normal anatomy and may lead to false diagnostic information. Do we do a regular KUB for this? It's going to be a regular KUB. Okay. So the first x-ray that you're going to take after you bring the patient into the room, you get them undressed. So what is, the, what is the preparation for the procedure? Okay, take it all off, exactly. Take it all off, mm -hmm. okay? Don't leave, don't leave anything on, and you want to remove everything, not only because it may get in the way of the pictures, but they may have an accident. You know, they got all that stuff in there the bra or whatever else. If they're wearing a t-shirt, then that's an issue. It's, it's gonna be nasty, okay? So, scalp first. Get them undressed. Remove everything from the waist up. Then do your scalp. Okay, remove everything from the waist up. You're getting the history, and we'll cover that here in just a moment. Okay, room preparation for barium enema. <clears throat> Did uh, Miss Miss take you take all of you guys to the back of the room? Okay. Mm -hmm. Make sure the footboard is intact. Okay. Another thing that you will see technologists do is if there is a pad on the table, what do you think is going to happen when the table stands up? Uh, it's going to slide. So the pad's going to slide. The linen's going to slide. So one other thing to consider when doing things like an upper GI and esophagrams, especially in a BE you want to tape down the pad at the top to the table, okay? Not all the way underneath where the, the table mechanism is, because when you're moving the table, the tape is going to rip. So make sure it's just at the edge of the table, not underneath the table mechanism, okay? So make sure that your fluoroscopy unit works, you've got your floral curtain intact. What are you going to do with the, the bucky? Move it to the end. Where's the bucket going? It's going to go all the way down to the end. Don't leave it here in the middle, okay? Because especially when you're shooting, uh, when you're doing fluoroscopy and the bucket's still there, it's going to produce a lot of scatter radiation and now you've just blasted your gonads, okay? So make sure that the bucket mechanism is all the way down at the foot of the table. Where's the x ray unit, by the way, for fluoroscopy? Under Up here? It's under here. Mm. What is this? <coughs> Image intensifier. Okay, good. Uh, other things that you need to have in the room. So the table is horizontal. Make sure you have all your uh, cassettes available, your image receptors. Uh, have your contrast media ready to go. Towels, linens, napkins. Okay. Um, bedpan. Have a trash can ready. These are new. I think I added these. You have a bedpan on there? Mm -hmm. Okay, put a bedpan on there. Have a bedpan. Have a trash can available. 
Um, I think I also added, well, some type of lubrication. KY jelly is very common in, in our radiology department. It's a very good lub lubricant, and it is water soluble. Um, lidocaine jelly is also should be available because you may be tipping somebody who has hemorrhoids. Yeah, ouch. Okay, so lido jelly is good with patients who have some type of anomaly going on in their backside. Hemostats, you guys know what hemostats are? Mm -hmm. They're just basically forceps, they're clamps, so I have a lot of those handy. Inflatable cuff for the uh, enema tip, and then some glucagon, make sure that's readily available. What's the whole purpose of glucagon? Diabetics. Okay, not, not so much diabetics, but yes, for diabetics, but this is good for someone who may have bowel spasms. When you're putting that uh, contrast, when you're putting stuff in there, they may have a very, very mean bowel contractions. Okay, so the glucagon will help relax those muscles. Okay, sometimes what they'll also do is they'll mix lidocaine inside the barium. Doctor will let you know if you need to do that or not, but it does help uh, the uh, numb up, anesthetize the, the lining of the bowels when forming a barium enema. Okay? All right. You need also an IV pole. Have an IV pole ready to hang your, uh, your enema bag. And then also what you'll need available are your positioning sponges. So have your positioning sponges ready to go too. You're gonna have your patient lie on their belly, on their back, different oblique positions. They may be standing up, so have your positioning equipment ready to go. So contrast media that we're gonna use for barium enema. <clears throat> the system that we have is for single use and it's a closed system. This is a closed system. They didn't have any pictures of what an open system was. This is an open system. It's basically a receptacle. You just pour the barium in there. You connect the tube in this little uh, nipple or nozzle here. <coughs> but that's an open system versus a closed system. Open, closed. Okay. Now, this is real cool. In some of the the barium kits, barium enema kits that you get, it's going to have the. Um, it's going to have the barium in powder form already within the bag. So all you got to do is just open up the bag, put water in there, and just shake it up. And here you have the control of adding your own water so you can make the consistency of the barium thin or you can make it thick. And, and that's again whatever the practice that uh, is performed there in your hospital. Most places uh, use a uh, thicker type of barium to do barium enemas because they have a tendency to stick better at, on, on the walls, in the lining. Okay? Um, Do you use tap water for that? Just tap water. <coughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> Which takes us to the next one here. Um, the water that you use. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. So it can become uh, either in a powder form in you, and you mix it up, or we also have already pre-made. <laughs> okay, this is, a, this is a barium. It is a colloidal suspension. So look what happened to the barium. It sat there for a while. So all the metal, because barium is metal, right? All the metal uh, settled to the bottom. So you have to, before, this is pre-made, so instead of the powder and the add water, this is already pre-made and just pour the barium into the bag. Okay? So one of the things that you have to do before you start putting the barium in the patient's bowel is that you want to shake up the bag before you allow the, the barium to go in. Because again, what happens is if you are in, if you're waiting 
uh, to start the procedure, the bearing may settle to the bottom, and it's not, uh, it's not a good mix. Okay, so this is barium. I'm gonna start over here. So I want you, I will ignore. Just pass it around. It's a small bottle, but feel how heavy it is. It's heavy. It's very heavy. Okay. All right. <coughs> so <coughs> the barium, cold versus uh, room temperature. Depends on the, um, the school of thought. If it's cold, it's generally between 40 to 45 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Some doctors believe that using cold barium acts as a, uh, an anesthesia, gives you a more better feeling in the bowel. But they also found out that if you if the water <coughs> too, if the barium is too cold, it can cause contractions. So most. Physicians will do the procedure just using the barium in room temperature, which is approximately, you know, about 80 degrees. Okay, room temperature, and you don't want it too hot because now you're going to burn the lining, intestinal lining. Okay. So again, colloidal suspension mixed well before use. Uh, have glucagon ready. Have glucagon ready if spasm occurs. Uh, topical anesthetic may be added to the contrast media, again, like lidocaine, uh, to help ease any type of uh, pain that they have in the, in the intestines. Okay, any questions so far? No. All right. All right, different types of enema tips. Plastic disposable. Okay, this is generally used with, um, with, um, the gastrogram and the iodine type of contrast. Then you have the more flexible types of tips. Uh, we have a rectal retention tip. So at the end, again, the, the tip is very pliable. At the end, end, you have the inflatable retention balloon. And then you have <coughs> this one port, okay, that one line, that you will connect an end deflator at the end that will allow you to inflate your enema tip, okay? And then there is a clamp here that will allow you to prevent any air from leaking out so the air doesn't go back into your inflator cup, okay? And to let the air back in, you just open up the clamp and air goes back into the, the cup, okay? So this is good here. When we're looking at this, this is good for single contrast study single contrast study because there is no other port or line to allow air to go into the intestine like you do have like you have over here so now you have two lines one is for the inflation of the balloon and the other one now here is another line this is the third line that allows you to <laughs> I always like the re responses, reactions, okay? So this will allow you to put air into the, uh, the bowel. Pump it up. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now, this cuff, okay, the, the way this, this is made, it's intentional. The size of this cuff is intentional because you're only supposed to put in a certain amount of air into the retention balloon. The whole purpose of the retention balloon is to prevent the, the uh, enema tip from getting dislodged, okay? You don't want to put any more than what's allowed in this cup. That's the reason why, again, it's a certain size, okay? Now here's the however. You may have an elderly patient who no longer has that muscle, that rectal muscle, and so, one puff may not be enough. Okay, one puff may not be enough. <laughs> puff, puff. So then, what I would do is I would get a hemostat, remove this. Oh, I just got this on. And I would blow this up again and give it one more puff. So now I've got double the volume, so that they don't they don't push it out. It won't pop. No. And how how do you discover this? 
How do you describe this? No, no, by, by experience. By practice. By, yeah, by patience. So how do you know whether or not? Well, when you puff up the balloon, okay? So after insertion, you puff up the balloon, what you're gonna do is you're gonna give it a couple of tugs. <laughs> They're gonna be like, what are you doing back there, Sonny? Make sure it's nice and secure. <laughs> and if it just comes right out, okay, now we're gonna give it another inflation. Okay? I'm sorry, sir, your feet are stuck in that. Yeah. <laughs> and they probably won't feel it. Okay. <laughs> the other thing that I want you guys to keep in mind when you put that tip in and you inflate the balloon, let them know. <laughs> Naturally, yeah, we're going to talk about telling them what you're going to do. Naturally, what's going to happen is they're going to want to push, and they're going to feel like they're going to have a bowel movement. Because in your rectal area, there are receptors there that when the fecal material pushes up against the wall, that's when it's saying, oops, I need to go to the bathroom. Okay? So now you're putting something artificial up in there, pushing up against the wall. The receptor says, I need to push. Okay? So one of the important things that you're going to tell your patient is, Miss Jones, I'm going to put this rectal tip here in just a moment. You're going to feel like you're going to want to go to the bathroom. Don't. Don't push. We'll try our very best to get through this as quickly as possible. Do you have any questions? That's part of your dialogue. Okay. So again, you're going to feel like you want to go to the bathroom. Do your very best to hold it in. Okay. And we'll do our best to go through this procedure as quickly as possible. Okay. One of the other things, too, also that you're going to tell your patient during the fluoroscopic portion of this is to let them know that they will be moving around in different directions. Do you know how hard it is to move from your belly to your back to your side with something sticking out of your butt? <laughs> I can only imagine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't, but I can only imagine. Uh, okay, so no, nobody, nobody yes? Okay, so it's a no. they're not going to admit it. Right. <laughs> So it is difficult. So you want, as they're moving around, you want to prevent, you don't want them getting tangled up on the slime. Because if they get tangled up on the slime, they can easily dislodge the, the, the catheter tip, the enema tip. Okay? So one of your responsibilities as a technologist is to, as the patient's moving around, to move the lines to make sure that they don't get tangled while they're trying to obtain those different positions for the patient for the fluoroscopic uh, portion of the exam. The other thing that you guys are going to be doing as, uh, as technologists is you will be the ones controlling the flow of the, the barium. So you're going to be standing here with this clamp, because there's a clamp here. No, there a clamp on top? Hemostat. Oh, hemostat, okay, thank you. So there is a, a clamp here. <laughs> that you will be clamping off, off and on during the procedure. This is, well, the clamp here is going to be closer to the bag. This isn't going to be near the patient's rear end. So we're going to move this closer <laughs> to this end over here. And the doctor will say barium on. Remove the clamp. Barium off. Clamp it. Barium off. Remove it. Barium on. Remove it. Give them five puffs. Okay, stop. Okay, barium on. Give them ten more puffs. <laughs> so that's what you'll be doing. Puffing and clamping, huh? Puffing and clamping. <laughs> and making sure that they don't get tangled in this uh, mechanism. Isn't it easier if you just pinch the tube and then... No, no, yeah, you can do that. Okay. So the, the question was, is it as easy Is it as easy as just pinching the tube? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. But are you really completely clamping it off? Because I've done That's that too. Yeah, I've done yeah. that. Yeah, you can do that. But I've done that in the past too, and sometimes you can see that barium still trickling in. Yeah. But do as they do. That's what I Yeah, do as they do. All right, so those are the different tips. Um, this is the basic setup of doing a barium enema. You don't put that tip in there until they are ready to go. Another protocol that may differ from hospital to hospital is that you're not inflating that balloon until the doctor comes in. But most places will have you inflate that balloon before the, the doctor comes in to do the fluoroscopic portion of it. So again, 
follow whatever the protocol is. You guys understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So this is the position that you're going to place your patient in when inserting the enema tip. Let me just make sure <coughs> I, I don't go ahead of myself here. Okay, so make sure that uh, you're going to roll the patient on their side. Please practice good modesty. Make sure they're properly covered. But you will have patients saying, honey, there isn't anything that nobody's seen. Okay, and they'll allow you to do whatever you want with them. Okay? <laughs> but you still want to keep them covered as best as you can. All right, modesty. Um, roll them up on their side. Also be mindful, not only of gender, but also be mindful of age. All right, because age can also play a factor. You may, you may have to get somebody else who, well again, if it's a female, you may get a, a female technologist to put the tip in. If it's an older female, Remember what I said? Sometimes you don't even care. But if it's a younger female, you want to get a female to put the tip in. Okay? Males, they usually don't have a preference. They should just put it in there. Okay? <laughs> they don't want to figure Right. But gender, gender and um, age does play uh, a role in, in tipping the patient. Okay? Um, other thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, when putting the tip in, you have to put your face down there to look where you're inserting the tip, okay? Females, if you have a female patient, especially if it's an older patient, okay, remember there are two Four openings faces. here. Don't hit the wrong hole. Dude. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? And those holes are closely together, and if you're older, the skin isn't taut, it's loose. And if you have an obese patient, even still, it's hard to see over there. So when you're putting the tip in, you literally have to rest your arm on their hip. You're going to take your hand and you're going to pull their cheek up. You're going to cup it. And you're going to look. Now, when inserting the tip, you don't want to insert like this. You want to insert like this. Why not blow back? Because you're not in the line of fire. Okay? But watching what you're doing. I fear no rear. Yeah. I know it sounds funny. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but, but I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. A couple of years after I graduated from the program, I was working in a small hospital in Santa Ana. And I was the only tech there. It was a small unit. So I was the only tech. I was a male tech. Male, okay? A female patient came into our department. She had an order to have a barium enema done. She was 19, okay, 19 years old. So I said, I'm not gonna tip her because I don't want any lawsuits from happening because it's just me there in the department. So I went to the emergency room to grab me a female nurse to tip my patient. So she came in, tipped the patient, she stepped out of the room, put the patient back in a supine position and I called the doctor in to begin the study. All right? So when she's on, when she got on her back, Hello. this is one of the first things that the doctor told me to do because we, we didn't inflate the balloon at the, uh, for this particular hospital. We didn't inflate until the doctor came in. So I put her on her back and the doctor says, inflate. So I inflated. All I heard was a mm. She said, mm. Okay. You usually get a response, but it was kind of like, a, mm. and he goes, barium on. When I turned that barium on, she started screaming. She went, ah, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Okay. Like, damn, so bro. I've done a lot of these, and it shouldn't be a problem. So I, the doctor said, clamp it off. I said, clamp it off. And she's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And she's like, yeah, she's still a little bit painful. And the doctor was like, you know, the usual, it'll be okay, we're just going to fill your bottles up with barium and we'll get through this as quickly as we can, okay? Barium on. Ah! <laughs> now we're thinking something's really wrong, and you're seeing some of the barium flow onto the table now. So the doctor rolled her up, she tipped look at where the tip was, tipped the veg. and the nurse put it in her vagina. <laughs> That's not good. She's an RN. She was a female RN. Anyways, we had to write an incident report and 
you know, anyways, we got a good shot of her vaginal canal, but, <laughs> but do, I mean, imagine God. that. Barium inside the canal, the vaginal canal. Huh? How do you flush that? Lavage. Douche. Lavage it. Lavage it. So, um, again, you know, it's, it's funny. Okay, it's funny, but it's not funny. Not for her, it wasn't. Yeah. So, again, when you're doing this, you know the difference between the two openings. Why didn't, I feel like she would. Yeah, like. That's what I just said. Oh. She's a female. She's an RN. No, the patient. No, the patient, but like. She doesn't know any better. A lot of patients don't know any better. Yeah. Of, yeah, I mean, well, I explained it, but they don't know any That's better. what I was thinking too, like, hey, uh, no, going up the wrong hole, dude. Here's an example, <laughs> working in the, working, hey guys, listen, here's another example. I work working in the cardiac cath lab for, you know, close to 17 years. We're doing a cardiac study, okay? But when they come to our department, we're shaving their groin. Okay, we're shaving their groin. We're, we're uh, disinfecting it with antiseptic. And that's where we put the, the, the needle, right? We inject, we inject them, put the wires, put the catheters in there. So as you're, you're shaving them, they're like, what are you doing? You're I like, thought you are looking at my heart. <laughs> okay. My heart's not down there, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so those are the, the people who ask, like, what are you doing? But you get a lot of patients doing, doing the same thing, too. It's like you're shaving down there, and they're just looking. It's like, hmm. All right. But they don't say anything. <laughs> Even if you explain it to them, okay, they're just so focused and so stressed out about the procedure, sometimes they're not really listening to what you're telling them is going to be done. <clears throat> so that was the story. So now, <laughs> so what I got in the habit of doing is every time I ask somebody to come in to put a tip, I'm looking now to make sure that they put it in the right place. All right. <clears throat> Anyway. <laughs> I think there was. Well, you know, it was, I don't want to say this, but this, this, this doctor was, uh, <coughs> he was, later on, he, what he, he got suspended for his work, because what he was doing is, for one thing, this patient wasn't local, she was like from the Torrance area. So he was, he was a doctor telling, patients that they needed to have certain procedures done so that he can collect so we can collect on yeah collect on the procedures yeah so they were doing unnecessary examinations on patients who were healthy hmm. bastard yeah all right so anyways and I'm a tip insertion communicate with patient wear gloves okay yeah, let them know what so. you're gonna do so um, so here's the routine. Patient comes in, I'm gonna do the history, okay? What kind of problems have you had? Are you having? Have you had this procedure done before? Any chance of you being <coughs> pregnant? Da, 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 da. Any chance of you having surgery? Have you had any surgery? Uh, are you having any, any upcoming surgery? Okay? And then I say, okay, here's the gown. Go to the room. Opening goes on the back side. They come back out. Okay, after they removed everything, I'm going to put them on the table and shoot my KUV. Okay, it's just going to be a regular KUV. That's your scalp. Okay, show the image to the physician. Okay, the doctor says, "Okay, go ahead and set them up." Then I'm going to go back in the room and now I'm going to do the explanation of the procedure. Okay, that's one way of doing it. So, Miss Jones, in a moment, I'm going to have you lay on your on your back and. And I'll say, and we're going to put an enema tip in you. Okay, we're going to put an enema tip in your rectum, and we are going to fill your bowels up with some contrast for the for the procedure. Um, again, it's going to feel uncomfortable. We're going to do our very best to go through this procedure, so we'll try to go through this as quickly as possible. When the doctor comes in, he's going to have you lay down in different positions. So now you're telling him what to expect. Okay. And we're going to have you lay down in different uh, positions, take some pictures, and when the doctor is done, this is where it may change, because it depends on your hospital. 
when the doctor is all done and I have my own <coughs> set of pictures that I need to take, do you have any questions? Okay, and then we go from there. So after I've done the explanations, because I ask them, do you have any questions? Do you have any concerns? That's the best time to do it, is while they're sitting up at the edge of the table, you're having a conversation. If they don't have any questions, then you say, okay, I need you to lay down on your back, and I need you to turn your backside to me, okay? So they roll over, <coughs> now I'm gonna say, okay, Miss Jones, I'm gonna get ready to put this enema tip in you. Are you ready? Okay, so what you're gonna feel here in just a moment is the tip insertion. Miss Jones, I want you to take a deep breath in, blow it out, take another deep breath in, and as they're taking a deep breath in, I'm gonna have them let them blow out one more time. Okay, so what we're doing here is as they're blowing out, okay, because when, when you're inhaling, you're exerting. When you're exhaling, it's relaxation. So when they exhale, that's when you slip them the tip. <laughs> okay, take a deep breath in, blow it out, take one more deep breath in, now blow it out, blow it out, blow it out. Just like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Again, that's the way I did it. Maybe may different in your facility. <laughs>